You want to go help me with a new tip? Huh? You sure? Or you want to play out here? What do you think? Okay, let's go. Welcome back, everybody. It's 2023, and if you're new to the Flats Class YouTube channel, I promise you, you're going to learn more here than you do anywhere else about inshore fishing. So you may as well just go right over here and pop that little subscribe button. <laughs> Today, I'm going to share a secret of mine, something that I employ eh, usually from December through February when it's really cold, clear skies, the wind like it is right now. Uh, and when the fish are a little bit spooky and chilly. And that is taking my braid off my reels and putting on fluorocarbon. I'm gonna go in there and teach you guys inside the shop uh, a few of the nuances of the difference between braid and fluorocarbon line. Uh, while I'm getting set up, why don't you guys go watch some of this fishing action that I had the other day when I was testing out a new prop. kind of mud grass flat so I can get away with a lot more here. Push pull down. Come back there and turn all of you off. I know sounds counterproductive but I'm gonna do it. The other nice thing about using fluorocarbon is when you're making those twitches, they're not as sharp. So the bait doesn't bounce like a butterfly everywhere. It kind of reacts a little bit slower. When you got cold water temperatures, high pressure, and the water's this clean, well, and you, it's just smart. It's an edge. All right, I think I'm gonna talk about edges. I'm going to move to the edges because it seems like enough water has come in here now to put me on the run. So let's move. They'll bite that. They won't bite the rest. They will definitely bite that. Nice fish. Is a nice fish too, buddy. 
Big and fat. Big and fat. Just the way I like them. Just the way I like them. Isn't that a pretty sight, huh? Let me take him off and a nice warm-up day to go fishing and we're not done with that trip yet we've got the best part of the fishing action yet to come so bear with me i'm gonna go through some tackle talk about fluorocarbon lines and i know many of you are surprised that i would throw fluorocarbon and not braid uh, I would say that 90% of inshore saltwater fishing is done and done well with braid. So it's done very well with braid. So for me, braid is my staple. It's, it's the line I use the most. I love braid for throwing jigs and Texas rig baits and any bait that you have constant contact in, it has a lot of sensitivity. So why wouldn't you use braid? It's super strong. Uh, you can definitely, in most cases, cast farther with braid. Uh, it's much better for spinning gear. And, and it, it just allows you to do everything. So yes, nine out of 10 times you're using braid. There's no doubt about it. Braid is, is the superior product. If you're throwing Topwater plugs. Well, if you're throwing a topwater plug, you're using braid. You just are because the line floats. It doesn't dampen the action of the topwater. Uh, it's just, it's better that way. But let me tell you a few instances where fluorocarbon is the best choice. Now, I don't pick the most expensive fluorocarbon to throw. I throw that one. I don't have any business relationship with this brand at all none it's just that it's a middle of the road quality uh fluorocarbon line that i can buy on my own dime and i like to buy 15 pound spools and it's still a nice thin diameter it's limp it has great castability ties ties good knots it's it's a good line it's a good line so why would i choose to use fluorocarbon line well when we start getting really chilled down and the water temperature starts to drop and knocks all the algae out of the water, many places, especially where I reside here in Florida, the water is, is crystal clear. It's as clear as water. I mean, it's clear. The fish see everything and they're spooky because we have lots of bluebird days after the fronts. And it's just, it's the right time to take advantage of fluorocarbon. So uh, the obvious would be, and I'm sure I'm gonna have a lot of you comment below, the obvious would be the invisibility of fluorocarbon over braid. Some would argue, well, I, I tie an FG knot and I put like 10 feet of fluorocarbon leader on it. Will that work? Hell yeah, it'll work. That works great. If you wanna have leaders that long, that works great. Uh, I, for one, just want to run my 15 all the way down to the plug and not even put leader on lots of times unless I know there's the opportunity to catch bigger redfish or if there might be a snook or something like that. But I just want to have straight 15 pound fluorocarbon all the way to the plug. No leader at all. And it's great. You know, fluorocarbon because of that invisibility, naturally, that's probably the biggest advantage. I'd say the second biggest advantage is the ability of the line being dense. It's a super dense line and it doesn't float like braid, it sinks. As you all know, when these fronts go by and whatnot, we have a few breezy days between December and March. That's probably the windiest period we have, other than hurricane season, naturally. But when you make that cast, and that fluorocarbon hits the water, it starts to sink a little bit. So you don't have that line floating on the surface and being pulled across the water. And your mirrodine like, looks like a water skier for the first 15 or 20 feet before it can get some bite, some grip and get underneath the surface. So it's great for accuracy. Uh, it also has a little bit of what I would call forgiveness within it when it's out there. So when I'm out there 
not only after the cast, but I'm flicking it, you know, flicking that bait, flicking that bait. Well, with braid, that thing is, I mean, it's active. It's like trying to catch a butterfly. But this time of year, when the fish aren't so aggressive and you flick it with fluorocarbon, it flicks because it has low stretch, but it does not flick or, or flash as hard, which is appealing, especially when you're throwing Paul Brown lures and the like. It's perfect for that. I also find it to be an advantage when throwing these two types of baits because of the treble hooks, because of that stretchiness, that forgiveness. Once you hook that big speckled trout, and that's what I use the fluorocarbon the most for. I'm not targeting on 15 pound fluorocarbon. I'm not targeting snook and I'm not targeting 30 inch plus redfish. That's not, that's not my goal. But when I'm targeting trout, this is a huge, huge advantage. Uh, so it's perfect for the plugs. It's perfect for trout. Um, for me, it's just it's just one of those tools that's in my in my toolbox that I want to take the biggest advantage of. Uh, one thing that a lot of guys don't think when I fish for spooky fish, and and I've done some shows with uh, Cody Pierce, where we've made casts to fish with braid. And they come down, they hit that braid, and then they move right down the line toward the boat. And because they, do they see it or do they feel it? Do they hear it hitting the grass? You know what I mean? Because, I mean, it transfers sound. When you throw fluorocarbon, it's slick. It does not transfer that same way. So if I'm going to throw, so you can throw these small swim baits. I'll throw these small swim baits with very fine wire hooks. Um, Fluorocarbon wouldn't be the best if I was going to throw, you know, a big heavy, heavy hook or, or jig or throw a big swim bait. Let me give you a, for instance, like that hook there. I wouldn't throw that with this fluorocarbon, not on the rods I'm using, but if I'm throwing something like that, a mushroom head, this is a Ned head, um, on a little three inch finesse swims, that would be perfect. Slim swims. That would be perfect. So when I'm fishing spooky fish, I like the fact that my fluorocarbon is nice and slick and it doesn't make any noise and it's hard for them to feel it. It's hard for them to see it. Gets me a lot of bites. Now, when you come back, because you're going to see some more fish caught, you come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about fluorocarbon lines and braided lines. Bunch of mullet right in here. you got to figure there's got to be a redfish in there with him somewhere you can just get his attention gotta be one red in there come on give me a give me a shot I'm really working on kind of a high pressure day but the front comes in two more days and this is the warmest water we've had so with warm water I want to take advantage of fishing even though it's crystal clear and the water's super low which that's why I'm using this bright sun clear water <clears throat> lots of times when it's a tough bite for everybody else with artificial I can still I can still come up with a couple of nice fish so I'm going to fish this hole here I know it's hard for you to see but there's a depression here that's about two feet deep and everything around it is six feet deep usually I'll catch a couple of reds in this hole it looks like today just speckled trout which I'm just fine with just fine that's easily 35 yards right there someone pulled back on me come on you don't have quite the feel that you have with braid but you have that forgiveness once you get one on and I'm just looking for the slobber knocker size you know the size that matters I'm not worried about little fish you know these wintertime patterns where you get to fish these couple warm-up days before the fronts I like using these slower reels, these 7.2 reels, and 
I like fishing the brightest part of the day where it's the warmest. It fires them up, and I definitely take advantage of the salooners. But fishing slow, you know, I've got more rod motion than I do reeling motion. That way I'm popping that bait, giving a lot of flash. Ooh, right, ooh, had one. Giving it a lot of flash. But I'm not giving a lot of forward movement. That's what's important. Is more of a yo-yo type action. Of course, I could use a jig if I wanted to, and maybe I would catch a few more fish. But I'm going to catch the biggest fish on these plugs. Always have. I don't see anything changing. Throw back in this mullet over here. Long cast. redfish out of here I've already seen one go by so I know I know there's a few in here and I've had several trout kind of mouth the bait only put a hook in two so so this new one I tied on is what we call the bleach blonde uh, Texas call it the gringo but it's a it's a good little bait um, it's easy for me to see where the bait is when I'm throwing it to holes out here because it's so bright and with a bright sky that baits gonna look a little dark anyway up against the surface uh, for trout that are laying tight to the bottom and redfish too so I'm feeling confident it's still gonna be a good choice in bright sunlight yeah, I got one as soon as I turn that camera off, boys. It's a good one, too, I can tell you, because it's mudding the flat up. It is mudding the flat up. I see it boiling out there. It's still 75 feet out there at least. Oh, big freaking redfish. Look at that thing out there. It's a sight to behold. It hit the bleach blonde. Oh man, what a toad. Now you'll notice that I'm thumbing my spool coming up and then reeling down, taking some slack out and then thumbing the spool. I have my drag set fairly loose um, because I'm expecting mostly to catch trout. This is a, this is a good redfish. Um, and I knew I'd get one if I fished these holes long enough. But you gotta take your time when you're fishing uh, mono or fluorocarbon. But I'm telling you, it is a super advantage. Now, I tied on a small piece of 25-pound gold Seaguar uh, for bite tippet. So I do have a little bit of bite tippet. But this thing just T-boned my, my plug. And I'm fighting them in a manner where you guys can see a little bit of this. Because this fish is going to be top of the slot, if not over slot. And he's got it in there too, buddy. I don't even see the plug on the outside, so he ate it. He ate it. Oh, yeah. Good fish. But this stuff right here, uh, on the tough days like this, crystal clear water, it can really, it can save the day. You just got to get a little confidence in it. This is a big redfish here. I mean big. Look at it. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm fishing them on my Terramar double X. This is where that, <clears throat> that, that wrap that they've put on here, high power X and spiral X really comes into play because when you get a fish this big and this strong close to the boat, it's important that your rod doesn't twist and give way because you can either break your rod or you'll break the fish off. But this fish, as you can see, I'll bet this fish is 32, 31, 32 inches long. Easy, look how heavy it is. It's a gorgeous looking fish. Let me see if I can get my plug out of there. Actually, I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna be safe here and not hurt him or me. Get my foga. So you can see down in there, there's my, my lure so I'm gonna have to fish it out so I'll be right back now we've got them off the oh there it goes so you're probably asking 
why is fluorocarbon such a, a good choice? Well, it's, it's more than just the invisibility of the line. It also doesn't make noise uh, when you're when you're pulling it through the grass. It's so slick. There's no there's there's no associated noise that seems foreign to the fish in the water. So it can be a great tool. Why wouldn't I use it all the time? Because it's just in a lot of situations, especially with single jigs, it's just not the right thing. But with plugs, it's really good with plugs. Uh, I always keep one reel on board with fluorocarbon or mono. Uh, mostly fluorocarbon, honestly, but uh, in some places it's hard to find castable or it's just too expensive fluorocarbon. But uh, I always have one to complement my Power Pro. All Texas rigs, all single jigs, and you know, bigger treble hook plugs, always my braid, always my Power Pro. But with these medium sized plugs and really small plugs, if I'm not gonna use a real forgiving rod, something that has a moderate taper and more of a medium light action, this is a seven foot medium right here with a fast uh, tip. And this fast action is just about perfect for not only casting these 27 MRs and 17 MRs, but also for fighting fish, being able to give them enough deflection in the water so they look real. So there's some there's some real positives to this uh, this setup here, and I've matched it up with the uh, with the Trinx 150, which came out this year. Boy, do I love this reel! Uh, and it's it's actually made for us saltwater guys. It's nice to have an inshore reel that actually is as advertised. I should say as advertised. <laughs> that hero size redfish was not exactly what I expected because I had been observing some mullet because I was fishing a really skinny flat as you could see there. And within that flat are these big sand holes, almost like bowls. And when the water starts to fall, it pulls all the mullet into those zones. And a few of the redfish that reside on that flat that that's typically a tailing flat in the spring and fall for me they'll fall into those bowls and they'll sit down but when the mullet are going around they create enough noise that it's easy to catch those redfish um, now fortunately i had tied on a piece of 25 pound fluorocarbon uh, tippet which is a lot stiffer just to give me some bite tippet uh, i only had like nine or ten inches of it but good thing i had it or i probably would have lost that one because he i mean absolutely hammered that that 27 mr and choked it got it down there so i had to do a get my hemostats out and get them off the get them off those hooks okay let's talk a little bit more about the differences in these two okay i told you why i like to use that cigar fluorocarbon but and and that's the Invisex lineup they make a couple of different formulas some of them are too expensive and that's one of the drawbacks of this this stuff is not cheap and if you're not going to use it on a fairly regular basis then then some of you will say i'll never do this see i'm never going to do this so it's the affordability of it um, versus braid um, the other thing is is I don't feel as if, unless you drop way down in weight, like if you get down to like eight pound, then you can put this on spinning reels and it'll do okay. If you put it on spinning reels and you're using the heavier stuff, then I feel like, okay, you get a couple of bird's nests and knots in it, and it just doesn't do as well. So for me, it's, it's definitely more suited in my style of fishing of casting gear. Uh, it, like I did say, it does have a memory problem, so you've got to you've got to fight that, and it will not it will not cast as far as braid. Braid is superior when it comes to casting distance. So if you're looking now, I'm not saying you can't buy 
a high enough grade fluorocarbon to be able to cast. Like there's several of them out there, but they're like super pricey um, that will cast as good as braid. But for the use that you're going to use it for, I think my guys will use it for. Um, I think InvisX is as much money as you need to spend on it. And for me, I, I do not have quite the sensitivity to feel all the bottom, you know, and I get hit by little, little fish sometimes and you don't feel everything with fluorocarbon like you would with, with braid. But where fluorocarbon is, is the equalizer is on those baits like Paul Brown's and suspenders like Miriam's because you flash them and then you're on slack line. Okay, and it's falling. Well, on slack line, braid and fluorocarbon are absolutely on equal ground because you can't feel the bite happen. And then when I go to twitch again, then I've got them. You know, reel a little bit of slack out, twitch again. Reel a little bit of slack, twitch, twitch. That's when you get them. And it's, it's that give and take. Now, I'm not saying that you guys that are using braid through the wintertime are at a disadvantage, you're not. You just adjust your equipment. You, you use braid and you use lighter action rods, more moderate action rods that with moderate tips that bend more, the, the Texas style rods, if you will, more parabolic rods. But I have some super nice Shimano rods that are super crisp and they allow for really sharp, accurate casts and I don't, I don't want to get off those rods and go to a different rod. I'd just rather use this. So it's, it's a game of take. There's always this, this flexibility. A lot of you will say, well, what about the abrasion resistance? Well, in the wintertime, most of our water levels are low, and I'm fishing fish that are sunning most of the time, so they're outside. So I'm not using this stuff around docks. If I were, I'd have to buy a lot heavier uh, setup for it. You know, I'd have to use 20-pound fluoro with a big long piece of a bite tip and stuff. At that point, I'd rather just use braid. So there are limitations to this advantage that I'm, I'm sharing with you. But if you're fishing for speckled trout this time of year, I'm telling you, this stuff is going to, to definitely up your game. If you're fishing for spooky redfish that you seem like you can never catch, and I can't even believe I'm sharing it with you because I've only shared that with a few people about how to catch those fish. Um, and those because that's just because of tournament days. I'll tell you a quick story. When I was growing up, there used to be a captain in Tampa Bay named Doug Hemmer. And Doug was one of those guys that always used monofilament line. And he was a trout fisherman. And he pretty much kicked all of our ass. He just did. He was a good fisherman. Uh, and, and that monofilament line, when we were all switching to all the other braids back in the day, like Raptor and stuff like that, we would, we would hook fish and we'd seem like we'd get as many bites sometimes with longer leaders, but we lost so many fish when they come to the surface and start shaking those trout or they jump out of the water and do one flip and they're off. He would never lose any because he was using softer mono and copolymer lines. Later on in my career, I met another guide that got it out of Gulfport, Florida, which is right there in the Tampa area, uh, named Captain Tim Drummond. And I would, I would, he would tickle me. He'd back his little center console in in the mornings and he'd have about eight rods that were all set up with mono rods. They're all mono lined rods. And this is when braid was widely accepted. I'm talking only like 10 or 12 years ago. And I'd, I'd ask him, he goes, he goes, I go, why are you still using like Andy monofilament line? Why aren't you using Power Pro? He goes like this. He goes, I trout fish. Most of my guys trout fish. We don't lose fish if we fish on mono. And he goes, and they feel good. They're fun to catch on that. So I, I get it. And a lot of that was shrimp fishing on circle hooks under popping corks and whatnot. And we're using small white baits. And it, it did work really well. So in cases, in certain cases, it worked real well. I got interested in throwing fluorocarbon lines from watching one more cast with Shaw Grigsby. Shaw was a personality on television when I was growing up and into my adulthood where I would watch him fish and he fished a lot of bass stuff that interested me because most of my heroes in those days were bass pros. But he also, because he was a Gainesville guy, he fished a lot of the West Coast of Florida. And some of that West Coast fishing was done with fluorocarbon line. 
And he was probably the guy from afar that influenced me the most on trying this on speckled trout and got me hooked on it. Uh, to this day, I use it, but I'm a paid pro from Shimano and Power Pro, so I'm supposed to promote that stuff. Um, and it works brilliantly nine out of 10 times. I'm just trying to teach you guys because you know I value your engagement on my channel that there are other products that can complement all this stuff and make you a better angler. That's my job is to make you a better angler. All right, if you enjoy these types of videos that we do at Flats Class YouTube, like I told you when we started this video, smash, I mean really smash that subscribe button. I want you to share this uh, because the only way this channel gets better is if more of you share this information and more of you guys subscribe. That'll allow me to have a cameraman instead of me having to do this all the time. Now you're gonna notice in 2023, we're gonna do a lot more videos. They're gonna be more often. And you're gonna see a lot of the shorts on YouTube that come from, from our show. So you're gonna see a lot of that too, some cool stuff. And if you haven't found out yet, we are on TikTok and I put unique information over there on TikTok, uh, teaching stuff just to garner more views. So if you want to keep learning and uh, you wanna go over to TikTok, for those of you that are TikTokers, it's not all dancing girls, there are some silver beards in there teaching you how to do a few things. Go over there and I'll teach you a few more things on that side. All right. Until next time, Captain C.A. Richardson signing off. Oh, well, not really signing off. It's midday. I got to go make another video. See ya.